What's up guys, Jordan from Bennett's Customs. We're back on another episode. A special guest over there too. Look who it is. Hey, what's up guys? <laughs> straight, there. straight from Canada land. He's, uh, we're actually working on the Roadster today, which um, is exciting. Um, I'm gonna be working on the body, getting it to fit a little bit better on those 32 rails. Uh, and what's, once I got it exactly placed where it is, now that I have the rear wheels on it, as you can see, I didn't actually film this, but there was nothing really to film other than I've just stuck the hubs on and we have a mock-up tire. This is a, a 650 um, and I will be planning on running a 750 on the back, but purely for mock-up and just getting everything to line up with the wheel well, it works out really well. Um, so what, I, what we're going to do is actually pull this off and I'm just going to cut a few more little bits out of the bottom of the subframe to get it to sit down snug on this frame. And then once that's on, and I know exactly where it's going to sit, we are going to work on putting the steering column in. Because then I can do steering column. Once that's mounted, then I can get the pedals mounted. And, um, you know, we can kind of just continue this step-by-step this -step on um, trying to get this thing finished. So I have that awesome 30, 32 right-hand drive steering box that I got from Steve in Canada. Thank you again. Um, and... Uh, when we get that mounted in, I can make a cool column. I got some cool um, column drops that I want to mount. I still really want to utilize using the top of this um, tank for the fuel. So we're going to make a couple little things for it. So um, yeah, basically, hopefully we can kind of get a wheel in here and I'll be sitting on an egg crate or a piece of plywood and I'll be making motor noises by the end of this video. So let's get stuck into it. And I don't know, what are we doing, Carl? I uh, picked the rustiest chunk of your car and started messing with it. So uh, we've got the inside of the passenger door. Oh, man, I keep... It's passenger door, right? Yeah. <laughs> no, it's driver's door. Oh, no, it is passenger door. For me, door. it's driver's door. Yeah, I got confused too. And uh, just trying to make a panel to fix a bunch of the rust on the bottom of the inner. Separated it yesterday. And uh, we're going to use some profile dies and try and knock this bead into that inner skin. Once this is repaired, I don't know if we'll have enough time, but I'd like to have enough time to make a skin for this just the lower skin, keep as much of the original patina as possible. So we'll try to beat out all the dents and save as much of the Henry as original, we can. Original Henry. Mm -hmm. Oh, Henry bars. <laughs> Loving oh Henry. Like that. <laughs> it's gonna be a good day. And he was talking about profile dust for a certain hammer. Yeah, we've been having fun playing with this thing. Mm -hmm. That is right here. Look at this tool island. Yes. It's like, you guys haven't seen this yet. Um, this is pretty exciting news. Um, yeah, massive shout out to Heron Forbes Machinery House. Um, we have an incredible opportunity to be able to have their tools in the workshop and to be able to build, um, you know, all of our future projects with them for, for a long time. So, um, yeah, big shout out to Rick and uh, Metal Master um, for fan. giving for giving us a, an incredible, incredible opportunity um, to be able to do it. So there's going to be a lot of really fun things happening on these machines throughout, yeah, basically the future years to come. So, um, and you know, first off, we get to build a profile gauge to be able to create something for the Roadster right off the bat. So We've actually used almost all of them already. Yeah, we have. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. We did a real fun yeah. assembly, which we might slide into this video. Um, but yeah, we've, we've used them all and um, yeah, they're, they're, they're kind of ticking all the boxes of our expectations, I would say. Yeah, definitely. Yeah, so yeah, it's, it's been cool. really fun. We had the little event night last night, and um, yeah, we're able to demo them and stuff, so everyone seemed to be really pleased with them. And so, very excited. But, no more small talk. Get to work. Let's get into it. We gotta get this roadster together. We only have a few more days with him. It's more just the drop and stuff, right? Where I'd want to mount it. Oh, yeah, the drop itself. Yeah. Right, right, right. 
because it, it's solid mounted to the bottom of the tank probably. Mm. So first off, this is what we're trying to eliminate is this big gap under here. And usually sometimes you can kind of pie cut right here along the front of this cowl where this one still needs to be repaired um, and everything kind of sits down because this frame kind of has a natural little kick up. And then in the back, there's a few areas. You can see where I've originally cut that out. So I need to cut a little bit more down on the bottom where it's sitting on the frame on both sides and then back here as well. And this is kind of a funny little setup, but as you can see, I've left these here. This is the stock 32 rear frame horns. So this is kind of still stock proportions for the frame. And I haven't cut them off yet because I don't know what I'm gonna do to them yet. Um, traditionally, everyone will then just cut them right up behind the rear cross member and then the body will kind of drop down and then this is the end of it. Some guys have done custom applications where they've made a 32 rear gas tank fit underneath a Model A body, um, which also looks kind of cool too. It's, uh, it's just basically comes down to preference. Um, with the front grill on and the front horns and that cross member that we made, it almost like kind of matches this back area. So it's like, you know, they're two opposite, but both very similar. Um, and this rack is off of a 36 Chevy. And I thought how cool it would be to, um, you know, kind of set up a little bit of a road trip, put the trunk on, you know, Casey goes in the, in the uh, dicky seat, Hudson's beside me in the front and uh, we can, um, yeah, go on a little road trip and have all of our bags and everything on the back of the rack. So yeah, a bit of a long distance journey. So we're gonna get this off, cut a few more bits out of it and then get this fitting back on the frame and then we can get stuck into that steering column. I'm actually just notching out a little bit of the frame here. Um, and what I'm doing is I'm trying to allocate for this bottom section. Um, this is quite a bit of the structure of the rear part of the car and I don't really want to cut into it too much because I'm still not sold if I'm actually going to keep these. Um, like I had mentioned before, usually everyone kind of bobs them back here so you don't see it. But I may shorten this a little bit and keep the spreader bar, um, you know, for kind of the idea I had with the rack. But 
I want to get this body sitting level uh, on the frame and what I need to do is just notch this little area out for this to sit down into. If I do decide to keep these, I can kind of run like a pie cut and bring that down or I can kind of modify them slightly. Um, structurally, all the structure is up here where it's attached to the frame. So back here, I'm not going to have load. There's going to be no tow ball hanging off this. It's purely just would be that 36 rack so I can put a suitcase on the back or maybe a little mini bike or something like that. So let's get this body back down and see how it's going to fit. All right, so we have the body sitting down a lot better now. So I've done this little notch, but I'm gonna, I can kind of clean this all up and follow body line and everything afterwards. But as far as just preserving these for, for the moment, um, they're on there, but the actual body line, you can see it's got a slight little gap. It's probably like maybe about a quarter inch less but there are two little rivets right here where the subframe um, bolts to so if I were to kind of flatten those rivets out I could get this going really nice as well as up the front here I did mention that you can kind of pie cut just this bottom section here and it would kind of lower it down slightly and I reckon that would take it almost right out so this is exactly where it's going to go I've measured everything um, as far as placement, it is sitting exactly square to the frame where I want it on both sides. So now I'm just going to clamp it in place in a couple areas and then I can get stuck into making our hole. This is the left hand, left hand side, left hand frame. You can see there's the hole, there's the three mounts. So I will make a template off this, transfer it onto the other side and then we can kind of play with um, the length of the column. So here we have the 32 box. What I'm gonna do is just loosely assemble everything and then we can kind of get an idea where we need to fit it. I know that this shaft, I have this step bit. I do not have a large 30 mil hole, but this fits perfectly. So what I'm gonna do is go to the other side where I know that that's where the reference point is, right here. And I'm gonna drill this out to 30 mil. We're gonna slide that in and then we can mark where we're gonna drill our holes once we get the pivot correct for our column. Okay, so now we have our steering box. We have our larger hole, and we're gonna put this in and pivot it until we can kind of get a, an idea. I'm gonna have to notch the firewall too, but. Okay, so we have it loosely mocked in. I've just used a G-clamp and, and it's kind of held against the frame. The flange is sitting against where it's supposed to. Um, everything's kind of square, which is good. 
as you can see, unfortunately, with running a flathead and the starter on the um, right hand side or driver's side for um, you know right hand drive cars uh, coming in like with Australia, it's super tough. Like you can see, we don't have a lot of room. So if I was to run this like log manifold, I believe this is like a truck style one, um, it would be perfect because there's ample amount of room um, and I would be totally fine. But because I'll probably want to make my own set of headers for it, um, I will end up running into a little bit of trouble with that. But there's still enough room, I think, to be able to make something work, which is good. Uh, if we jump into the cab, so this is kind of what we're working with. Obviously, we have the Model A steering bracket that is riveted to the bottom of the fuel tank for left-hand drive. You got your little cutout here for the steering column to go through. So there's multiple different ways I could do this. I could essentially cut, just trying to get a little bit more comfortable here. I could trim this out and then transfer it onto here, cut this section out, put it over there, weld it in. Um, but I kind of have an idea with something here uh, that'll come kind of in the future when we're, when we're closer to this thing being finished. So I may leave that for now. Anyways, we need to work over here. So as you can see, this is the column. Um, there's a little bit of play in it, but it will give us enough of a guide to where we need it. And I can also set up um, a column from upstairs. So what I need to do is kind of come in here, whack a hole, cut this out so that I can pull this up. And then we're kind of more up in this area. Uh, and then I will grab the column drop that I will try and modify in order to make something work off the bottom of here before this is uh, used for fuel. And what I'll do with this is um, in a future video, I'll pull this off and kind of run through it and show you how I would test it and then put like a tank reconditioning set through it. And that was just like a kind of a gel coat that goes inside there and fully seals it. And um, obviously, you know, is, is uh, safe for fuel. So let's uh, get down here. What we're gonna do is just bring this up. I'm gonna mark where it contacts. I'm gonna use a square, come up. I'm gonna draw a hole and then we are going to use a hole saw and drill through that. Well, let's just get this mocked up and then we can kind of, in future, we know what we can do with this if we have to. I wouldn't mind eliminating that if we need or I can maybe cut this section out, cut that section out. It's probably not a bad idea to do, actually. Or in rain, on the heat of that train, there she comes. Won't you get home? Well, shit. I mean, it's kind of a nice spot where the wheel is, if I could go a bit closer. At least my knees don't hit it. It's a bit tight for a seven footer. Yeah, it's tight. Well, this is kind of the sim similar situation I had with my green one. Um, for those who are not familiar, I did have a 3031. It was a 31, I believe, actually. And um, yeah, room was tight, but obviously, um, 28, 29 is a lot smaller. And uh, so, yeah, I'm just trying to work out a place position, trying to make it comfortable and um, yeah, comfortable for me to drive this thing. Um, I had originally spoke about potentially taking this out and dropping the floor down so I could kind of sit a lot lower. Um, and then this is kind of just giving me an idea of where my back would be. You know, the last one I had the seat sitting recessed behind here and then the padding kind of came out like that, which could work um, as long as I do something on here because it's kind of, it's right in the danger zone. If I got rear-ended this thing, I'd be, well, I mean, no matter what, you'd, wouldn't be ideal. 
But if that's kind of where I'm sitting, butts down, max into the cushions, and somehow I have brake and pedal assembly working. I don't know, I'm not sure. I could probably go in a little bit with the wheel or maybe that's all right. I'm looking directly at it. So I could kind of look between the top of the cowl and the bottom of the steering wheel, the top of the steering wheel. This is the, the part of being seven foot tall and trying to fit into the world's smallest car. <laughs> I like that though. Like it feels cool. I don't, I, yeah. I mean, sitting on this thing's not comfortable, but I could lower myself down or maybe it needs to go up a bit so it would take a bit more of the bend out of my legs. You know what I'm saying? But then if I sit on something and I'm trying to, you know, function over, over style, I'm more of a style over function when it comes to me being comfortable. I'd rather it look really cool and me be uncomfortable. <laughs> For the long hauls, it wouldn't be very good though, but like I do like that. And I know that jumping the gun, doing the steering column is probably not the best thing to do now until I have the seat fully figured out, but I can kind of play around with it a bit. I get the, getting the idea. Yeah. So when I show up to somewhere at the pub and I'm going, oh yeah, I'll be there in a minute. Just trying to get out of my car. Yeah and then I'm squeezing between the steering wheel and the door. And, oh yeah, hey oh, yeah, guys, what's going on? <laughs> I don't know. I don't know. Maybe I should just do a quick disconnect wheel. And I can just flick it off and... You can quick disconnect legs. <laughs> oh, quick disconnect me knees. Leave them in the trunk. Pretty easy to do. Yeah, maybe the wheels is too big. Maybe I should just run a little. You need a little Cheech and Chong or? Oh, little, chain one. A little chain, 10 oh. inch. Yeah. That's That'd be perfect. Saying. If we do that, we have to put it on hydros though. Model A traditional on hydros? Fully well, yeah. hasn't been done before. This is the dumbest thing anybody's ever thought of, but. True. I could full fender it and hydro it. That'd that be, be cool. that would be cool. All right. Time for some head scratching. And I'll come up with something. All right. Basically, I'm too tall for this car. That's, that's it. Now, I'm, I'm way too tall to fit in this properly to make it work and be comfortable. Um, I'm running into a few issues with trying to set up this steering column. One being the windshield. I want to lay this back slightly. If I do so, I need to lift this up and then I have no room between the windshield and the steering wheel itself. And I'm still planning on running a, you know, pretty almost half this as far as a um, windscreen goes. So the only thing I can do is make more room in here. So what Carl and I are doing, Carl's just loosely trying to lay it out. We are going to take this section and move it back. There's a lot of deck area. What would you call this? A catwalk, basically? Yeah. Um, there's a lot of area here. And this would essentially be my back, like kind of packed in the padding of the seat because the seat would be recessed under here and come down. There's just not enough room for me, my knees, for pedals, anything. I'm, it's just, unfortunately, it's just not viable. So what we're thinking about doing is bringing this whole section back and as well as this edge here, bringing this all the way back as well. So it's going to take a little bit of working out, but I think we can come up with something. What do you think? 100%. Pouring rain, on oh, hear that train. There she comes. Just get home. All right.
so we are still working on the steering column, um, trying to make something work. I went upstairs in our little parts inventory and I found a, another steering column that had a shaft on it, which had a collar for the bottom that holds it onto the steering box. So there's our collar. I did find a steering column that has the nice flare at the top and it actually had a bearing and a steering column drop on it as well. That was the drop. I don't remember what that year is, maybe 37, correct me if I'm wrong. Um, so that was on there, so I banged this off. I've actually already cut the end off of it to make this the right length for what I believe will work for us. Um, and with that nice flare, she does match the steering wheel ever so nicely. So that'll look really good, finishes it all off. Once it's all fixed, this is repaired, it'll, it'll definitely look the part. Um, so what I'm gonna do now is put it in the vise. We're gonna put our little notch or our cut in the end similar to that one there and that will help the collar lock down onto the steering column. Um, and then I can kind of mock this in, see where it's gonna fit. This is the column drop that I'm going to modify and make this work for underneath the tank. So I will have to cut and modify this, but I do really like the way this works. Everything actually works on it, so I can still utilize the steering lock, which would be very cool. Nothing to see here, guys. What is Carl doing? There's nothing to see here. We can't spoil the- It's the... a super rusty thing, that's all it is. <laughs> we can't uh, spoil it. Yeah, I've just been working on the bottom of this door, uh, knocking the bead into that piece that we made with the Metal Master, and just tried ripping around this corner, just jammed it into the same die and just ripped it around the corner. So uh, it's actually way easier than I thought to get that. And uh, I still got to do that for this side and then kind of wrap the bottom, but we're just about there, about 55 and a half percent, something like that. <laughs> Majority of the way through. Yeah, there's been a lot of humming and hawing. Mm -hmm. A mm -hmm. lot of uh, uh, um, choice of different uh, this and that. So hopefully we can come up with some sort of cool idea. Yeah, we're just about there. We're just about there. All right, get back to work. Get back to work, get back to work. All right, I'm gonna stick this in there. See what it looks like. Oh, I need to take my gloves off. I think that needs to be opened up a little bit more. Maybe a 32 column was actually a little bit thicker, but I should be able to get that over there and get it fitted. Shiza. All right, so basically what I'm just trying to figure out here is where this is gonna sit in relation to how far I wanna lay this, this back, my legs, size wise. Like if anyone were to jump in this right now, it'd probably fit them perfectly. But unfortunately, as we've discussed throughout this whole video, it doesn't fit me that well. But we can make it work. And we're kind of leaning where we're gonna be I think it's gonna be something like that. Something like that. Yeah, that's it. I wanna get nice and low. I wanna be like this though. Uh, that nah, chop, chop big time. Chop as much as I can chop it without getting too uncomfortable. The only thing that sucks, like everything's good. I got good clearance around my knees and that, but the only thing that's a bit annoying is when I get out of it. I need like a quick disconnect wheel. Because if that's where it's gonna go, 
that's great for driving. I'm kind of, you know, I'll be sitting kind of like, like that, sort of. My back's still very much against that, but it's the getting out part. Hopefully it's kind of sitting, something like that. And then I gotta f get my fat fast steering wheel. It's just not designed for me. It's just not designed for me. All right, so basically we've come down to, I'm too tall for these bloody cars, but that's okay. Um, I've got it fitted where I like it. I've made several different adjustments. I actually have the back dicky seat from Kyle's car um, as a backrest, just trying to figure out exactly where I'm gonna sit. And I think my previous Roadster, the 30, the green one, um, the 31, that one was obviously a little bit bigger. They are bigger. So I had a little bit more room in it, but I also feel like I can get away with designing the seat without having to cut this apart that we had just explained I was going to do. Also, potentially, I still might do it. But for now, I don't really want to cut this and pull it all back kind of that three inches yet. I think it might look a little bit goofy and you may notice it. Like maybe it might make the roof too long. I'm not, I'm not too sure. Um, so I think I'm just gonna try and get away with it. I did just take my work boots off, put me town slippers back on and um, I can fit a lot better in it this way. So if we jump in here, kind of just got a little setup kind of working, but I want to obviously sit low in this car, so I still might go down with the seat. As I mentioned, pulling that, that, that bottom subframe out still, which would kind of entirely get me down. But the only thing with me going lower is, um, I'm kind of going lower, but I'm getting maybe too much of a bend in my legs, which then kind of amplifies where they're going to sit. So I feel like I'm overthinking at a time, which I usually overthink everything, but I feel like this is kind of good. This is a nice spot where I can sit. Um, I can either kind of crouch down, got my vision through underneath the steering wheel, which you know I'm, I'm totally happy with. If I can try and get that that windshield chopped as much as possible, you know, for probably um, style over comfort with this one, I think. Um, but yeah, we got a little indicator stock over here. That little signal stat 700. I haven't really shown you yet, but that'll be in our next video as well as if Ben quickly just shines down there, he'll uh, see a nice little cool column drop. So that's what I came up with. That's gonna be in um, our next week's video as well because I have some really cool ideas that we're gonna finish with that. So um, yeah, I think that'll do the trick for now. Um, once we get, yeah, it's all mounted and I think I'm pretty pleased with that. I feel like that's gonna be a pretty nice little setup to work, work out. So. I got a lot ample amount of room kind of with my legs, which is good. Um, I know that the gas pedal will be up kind of off a little heel pivot and still got room here. And it's funny, if I open this door, when I get out, if I don't have my work boots on, I actually, I'm not that bad. It'll be different when I got that real tight top on there, but I think it'll work. It's, I'm just gonna deal with it because I want it to look cool and um, yeah, I think it'll be sweet. So hopefully you guys enjoyed that. I'm happy that we got the column in. I haven't done those bolts yet um, for the steering box because I need to get inside to mark them. Um, my 90 degree drill won't even fit in there. So I'm gonna wait till I pull the motor out. So I'll mark it all. And, um, and then that way I can put the bolts in to fix the actual steering box to the frame. Um, and then we can start working on the steering arm drag link uh, cross um, uh, shaft and everything else that basically needs to start making this thing turn. And then once that's in, pedals, we'll get those 33, 34 pedals um, mounted in there and cut and trimmed and fit. There's gonna be a lot of work in that. I will make some new um, bushings to hold everything together on our brand new lathe, which I'm very excited about. There's a nice little lathe over there from the boys at Heron Forbes. Um, so that's going to be massive to be able to um, sit on that thing and machine some stuff up right away. Um, and then, yeah, once pedals are done, steering's done, everything, like, 
I'm kind of just more dipping into the body. Need to get the rust repair done over the whole thing, get that door finished off, start this door. Um, and then once all that's done, yeah, we're, we're kind of clear sailing. We're, it's gonna be pretty cool. I think it's gonna wrap up like, it'll still take me a while to do this one because we'll have other projects on the go. Um, but I would love to be driving this thing for summer. So very much, I think it'll be a little goal of mine to um, yeah, get this thing going because I don't want to go another summer without having a roadster. That thing's fun to drive, but it's a bit too heat score for the, uh, for the, for the road and being for sale. I don't want to push it too much. So yeah, if anyone's still interested, it's still for sale. Um, but yeah, anyways, I'm dragging on. Let's wrap this up. Um, hopefully you guys enjoyed that and we will see you on another episode of Bennett's Customs next week where we wrap this up and build that really cool drop column. And um, yeah, we'll just keep ticking boxes on this thing because I friggin' love it. I just want to drive it. Uh, anyways, like, subscribe, hit notifications. Hopefully you enjoyed that. I think Carl's gonna get a coffee again. It's probably like three o'clock. Has a three o'clock coffee and then his 8.30 p.m. one, but he'll be somewhere. Anyways. Tira. <laughs>